Number three in the Imprint Asia range is Zakuichi, The Blind Swordsman, directed by and starring Takeshi Kitano. This is a remake of the series of films that came out uh, much earlier. And this is such an odd film. Tonally, it feels as if it's kind of nudging and winking at the viewer a lot of the time because it has this sense of humour throughout it while still having these really self-serious moments of sword fighting that are just wonderful and then it's mixed with some strange editing that feels overly choppy uh, the pace is a little bit inconsistent the score can be wildly and tonally off throughout it it's drenched in this CGI blood that just doesn't look quite right yet all the way through this there is a huge sense of fun and entertainment and it's a film that just held my attention and kept me completely entertained and at the end of it even though it had a lot of issues with some other things I wanted to watch this again I had a great deal of fun with it I wanted a sequel I wanted more of the same of this character <laughs> Kitano plays uh, Zatoichi uh, as he kind of moves through the land and we at the start get glimpses of some other assassins or ronin throughout the way and I kind of figured that these were all going to be the bad people uh, that Zatoichi was going to meet along his adventures but it doesn't turn out that way as he moves through the land he heeds tales of injustices he meets some of the other assassins and because he's almost superhuman, instantly knows them for what they are. He forms a bond, listens to their tale, understands their hunt for retribution and vengeance, and almost helps them along the way. And you get this build up of a group of characters who you really kind of like. You know, the his attitude is holding them all together he's helping these people he's pushing them forward there are bad people within the film who will have to be punished and he's just the man to do it so you go along these men on a mission uh, looking for vengeance that doesn't really matter because you get these wonderful action set pieces when they uh, begin they can be still and effective and sometimes they just get really choppy as we see this wild uh, swinging sword, chopping off limbs and CGI awfulness as they kind of flop about and blood spurts out everywhere, uh, creating this weird effect of being simultaneously poor effects but awesome action that creates a, a whole look of its own, which I gotta say, I, I kind of liked. <laughs> I loved pretty much all the characters in this one, whether it be the Ronin at the back who's looking for a challenge, looking for someone that he can fight again against that's going to match his ability. We know that Zatoichi is the man that he's going to butt heads again. It's just about getting to the situation where these two can have that awesome fight. And it is wonderfully played out with a kind of cat and mouse uh, visualization of what each man is thinking uh, uh, and yeah it's really quite clever the way it does that uh, there is plenty of action throughout this thing and it is fantastic most of the time and the film even makes this incredibly odd choice of having a dance number at the end of it there is odd it's unusual it's out of place with the rest of the movie but like everything else it's absolutely fantastic. Awesome. I loved it. There is one moment near the end of the film that I was almost um, put off by. There is a little moment, which I won't go into, but the Zatoichi, where it kind of changes the whole dynamic of the character. Now, right at the end of the movie, it reels it back in and kind of fixes that issue. But at that point, I was like, oh, hell, no, nope, nope, I am not having this at all. It just felt wrong. But they don't go that far. They kind of fix it just at the end. There is a good sense of humour throughout this thing, which is weird because you have this movie that is serious. People are dying horrible deaths. They're being subjugated. 
they've been killed but you know what they've always got time for a laugh uh, which they do multiple times throughout the film and again the humour generally works Zatoichi is such a weird animal of a movie. It looks fantastic. It has these great shots and cinematography is wonderful. There are certain scenes that just stand out, like people uh, standing there with like burning buildings behind them that are expertly put together. Then there are other sequences that are chopped to hell and just don't flow naturally and, and feel off-putting. There's a strange score that goes with it and the characters are just wonderful. It has faults, but I don't care because I loved everything else that kind of went into this one. Such a weird movie. Let's dive into this disc and have a look at some of the extras. Here we are in the disc for Zatoichi. Let's go to the special features. We have a commentary with his film historian and author Sean Redman. We have the making of the blind swordsman Zatoichi, which runs at 39 minutes 37 seconds. Starts off at the press conference talking about the film and then jumps into various scenes being filmed, uh, voiceover and talking heads. Then we have the crew interviews. You can play them all, which totals 38 minutes 41. Uh, some are better than others. Some offer more information than others, but they're all you know fairly interesting. And then we have the theatrical trailer, which runs at 1 minute 25 seconds. And that's the extras for Zatoichi. Here we have it, Zatoichi, The Blind Swordsman from 2003. Yeah, I would love to know your thoughts on this one. Surely you must have seen it. If not, you need to check it out. It's so unusual and highly watchable. I would love to know your opinion on this one. So let me know in the comment box below your thoughts. As always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff. In the description box below are links to Patreon, Membership Programme and manvfilm.com. Always in which you can support me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.